Hi, I'm Dustin Abbott, and I'm here today to give you a review of the newest tablet from Doogee, and that is called the R10. Now, I reviewed my first uh, tablet from Android tablet from Doogee a few months ago, the T30 Pro. I was quite impressed by it as an iPad alternative at a much lower price point, but as soon as I began to unpack this, I had no, I no idea what it was when it arrived, and I, as soon as I unpacked it, I was like, okay, that makes a lot of sense, because this combines their new tablet tablet kind of leaning into something that they're very familiar with, and that is creating rugged phones. And so the Doji R10 is a combination of those two things. It's a tablet, but it's designed around being a whole lot tougher than anything else you're going to buy on the market right now, which makes it a really interesting kind of combination of the rugged phone and then the tablet technology. It is rated for being drop proof. It is waterproof and dust proof, designed to work in harsh environments from minus 20 to about 55 Celsius. That's 100 and about around 10 below Fahrenheit to up to about 130 or so. So it is designed for use in much more rugged out environments than just your living room, for example. And so, of course, that means that it's going to be marketed towards definitely the outdoorsman camper type. You know, it can be wet, it can be get dropped, hold up for that. But in my mind, as I've used it over the last month or so, there's another application that makes, makes a ton of sense to me. And that is as someone who has worked on a lot of you know, job sites and worked in construction some, this is could be a great tool for construction worker, architects, builders, inspectors, anybody that goes onto a job site where it can be dusty, it can be wet, where there are things where things you know sometimes do get dropped. All of those things, the ability to expand blueprints, and even if you're in a situation where there is no Wi-Fi, the fact that this comes with dual 4G LTE ports, I mean you can run multiple SIM cards, means that it makes a lot of sense for going into a place where there is no Wi-Fi and still being able to pull up blueprints and uh, or, you know or various architectural drawings and blowing those way up. I know how it is with paper drawings. I've been out there and they've gotten wet as it starts to rain. They just get filthy and dirty. You know, and I, then I see people, guys with their phones, trying to magnify some image of it because they can't see as well as they used to. All of those things. And so I thought, you know what, this is something that makes a whole lot of sense for that. So let's kind of break down what we do have here. As far as, you know, some of those actual specs for the build and handling, it is rated at IP69K. So what that means, IP stands for ingress protection. That's keeping things from getting into the device. And so the highest rating of those comes in the first number, which is six. And so that means that it is rated to where dust is not going to get into this thing. And then the 9K refers to the water resistance, which means it can not only go underwater and be completely immersed for an extended period of time, it can even handle higher pressures and even temperatures in that setting. And so that means it's designed to really, really be tough. And so any kind of normal applications, I mean, I've known people that have killed their iPads because they were reading something in the bath or watching a movie and it fell into the bathtub and fried it. Well, obviously that's never going to be an issue. And even if you drop it into you know, some depth of water, as long as you can get down and you can retrieve it, you know, hopefully before the next day, you probably should be okay. It also sports Corning Gorilla Glass 5 for the screen, which um, I have repeatedly dropped this, you know, not from great heights, but in order to just kind of test it. And uh, typically, according to Corning, Gorilla Glass 5 survives up to a 1.2 meter waist high drop onto hard and even rough surfaces without any kind of issue, without scratching, without breaking. And, uh, and so, so far it's held up just fine. I don't actually see any marks on this thing and I have dropped it a number of times just kind of testing this. And so, so far so good at that point. Now your trade-off for that is that this is a thicker and heavier tablet than what most modern tablets are. It is 13.5 millimeters in its depth. So that makes it six millimeters thicker than what the T30 Pro was that I recently reviewed from them, for example. Makes it about double what the most recent iPads are. And it weighs in at 826 grams. That's about 200 grams heavier than the T30 and you know more like 400 grams heavier than my iPad. Uh, I, I, I have the Pro 11, most recent one, and that's my typical tablet, and it's definitely a whole lot thicker than that. It essentially feels kind of like the rugged phones. It feels like the case is built into it, and so it is going to be 
it's you know it's going to be heavier and it's going to be thicker to hold at the same time it does have more texture to hold so it actually feels in some ways more comfortable to actually hold which is good because the way that this is actually designed there's not going to be a lot of cases available for it for propping it up and so that could be a factor for a lot of people it's really kind of made to be held in the hand although as we're going to see at the end you can get a bundle that comes with a keyboard case for it you can get a pretty cool little display that um, but it is a separate accessory that you know sits on something and tilts the screen and angles it and so you can see it and so that's that's nice but the fact that it's a little bit heavier and you may primarily use it handheld means that it can get a little bit of fatigue bit fatiguing over time to hold it this obviously has another application for those of you that have young kids this could be a great option for actually handing off to your kids it's far less likely to get broken by them because of the fact that it is designed to take a lot of abuse. So maybe a secondary or tertiary application for this. Now the screen itself is a 10.4 inch 2K display. Resolution is 2000 by 1200 pixels. It has an 84% screen to body ratio. So, you know, it's not the tiny, tiny, thin little bezel because again, it's designed to take some beating. And so um, if you're looking for as much screen space as possible on as small a device as possible, you're probably going to want to look elsewhere for this. The brightness, it can get up to 340 nits, which is you know, quite bright, and it's 231 pixels per inch. Both of those specs are a little bit lower, just slightly lower than the T30 Pro, which of course is just slightly lower than what, for example, the iPad Pro is as well. 16.7 million colors, and the screen looks great when you're using it straight on, um, but I find that if you're looking at angles, the the viewing angle really plays a big part on how bright the screen is. And so if it's set down on a table, for example, and you're looking at this angle, I don't see nearly see it nearly as well as what I would my iPad. And that seems to be kind of a doogee issue in general when it comes to these tablets. I also noted that the adaptive backlighting doesn't work all that great. I end up mostly manually adjusting the actual backlighting. It's not nearly as effective as what iPad. iPad has kind of nailed that, and uh, I find that it isn't as good on this. Now, this does have the TUV SUD or TUVSUD um, blue light certification, and so it's easier on your eyes, which is very important these days. Also, the device itself is has Widevine L1 support, which means that um, um, it's going to be a very good screen for watching movies and other media because when you have the Widevine L1 support, it means that all the various streaming services will display at their maximum resolution and only on the devices that have that kind of certification. It also comes with quad high-res speakers and, you know, it's good. It's more immersive when you have quad speakers. The overall sound quality is not as good as the iPad that I'm accustomed to. I did feel like this was maybe slightly better than the T30 Pro, however. Maybe the little bit thicker housing allows a little more room for the speakers, and so they do sound a little bit better. Now, one of the things that they hype about this is that the screen, again, designed to be used outdoors. It can be touched when it's wet or when you're wearing gloves. And I find that that's true. However, I will note that, you know, for example, I dropped it in the tub, brought it out to see if I could do that. And what I found is that, yes, I could still navigate, but when there's water droplets on the screen, it causes inadvertent touching. And so it's not really usable until you wipe down the screen, mostly for the simple reason that it's getting inadvertent touch from water droplets that are sitting on it. So, you know, I don't know how practical it is to say you can touch it when it's wet. So let's talk about connectivity for a moment. This is the first of the Duji products that I have reviewed that is Wi-Fi 6 compatible. And what I do find is that means when I'm using speed test, I am getting, finally getting speeds that are equivalent to what I get on my Apple devices. And so that's great, very good performance when it comes to the Wi-Fi. Also, we've been upgraded from the four different GPS services that we had on the T30 Pro to five different GPS systems here, which of course is really important for something that's designed to be used outdoors, maybe out in the wilderness to where better uh, GPS positioning is going to be better as far as being able to use this. As noted previously, it does have dual SIM slots in this device. However, they do limit out at 4G LTE. This is not a 5G compatible device, and so you're going to get a little bit slower speeds, and that could be a deal breaker for some people. Obviously, all the latest Bluetooth specs, it does have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, all of those things always appreciated. Now, as far as, as far as the actual 
other specs when it comes to the performance of the tablet. It has the Helio G99 octa-core processor. So the way that that plays out for Doogee is that there are dual 2.2 gigahertz Cortex A76 processors along with six 2 gigahertz A55 processors. And so that allows it to run both efficiently but also to have a lot of uh, grunt when it comes to running applications or games. And again, I didn't really notice much of a difference between using this and my high-end iPad Pro. Uh, there's lots of processing speed that's there. It's all built on six nanometer um, design. And so it's you know good, efficient technology, which it brings to another part, which is a serious strength for this, and that it has a 10,800 mAh battery pack. And so it has amazing battery life. Just to give you perspective, that is 3,000 mAh more than what my iPad Pro has. And so this has got, you know, a good 30% more battery life, which is pretty impressive. And so it lasts for quite a long time. Uh, it does also have good RAM performance. There is eight RAM, uh, eight or eight gig of RAM native, but then there also you can expand to another additional seven gig gigabyte of RAM if you uh, just use kind of the virtual RAM settings. So you can get up to the equivalent of 15 gig of RAM, which I always do that. These things come with lots of storage and it's easy to expand storage. This has 128 gig of storage, but it's expandable via micro SD all the way up to two terabytes. And so uh, storage is not an issue. So losing seven gig of it to more RAM to allow things to run better, I say absolutely. And it's one of the first settings that I changed on this. Charging comes via, and uh, it's USB-C, of course, based. It's 18 watt fast charging. One thing that's interesting, again, for kind of a camping or out in the field type application. It does also have the OTG reverse charging spec. What that means is you can hook up a uh, USB-C cord onto this end and then you could have it on the other end. If you went to lightning, you could charge you know, an iPhone or you could charge another Android device. And so you could actually use it as a power bank as well, which is interesting. Now the camera specs are typical Duji so-so. We've got a 20 megapixel Sony main camera, which is fine, but you know, only so-so. And then there is a 16 megapixel Samsung front facing. And the best thing about this is that unlike iPad, it is centered in the middle of the frame. So if you're doing video conferencing or you know, some kind of video chat, you actually have the the camera in the better position to where you're actually looking at people and looking at them. In conclusion, the biggest thing that makes this thing attractive outside of the things I've already told you is the price. You can get this for about 300 US dollars, 295 US dollars, even cheaper with some discounts often. For another $70, if you want an accessory package, you can add on a stylus and that keyboard case that I mentioned. And for a total of $100, they add in that custom stand to allow you to you know, tilt it at various viewing angles along with an extra screen protector. And so that's 100 bucks for getting a stylus, a keyboard, um, getting a custom stand for it along with the screen protector. That's a lot of bang for the buck. And so obviously this is a really strong value, which is a Another tempting reason why you might put this as opposed to your iPad in the hands of your kids. And really, I think the best application is for those of you that need something tough, that you're interested in a, a tablet sized device, but you want something that is tough and durable. And I, I'm not aware, I'm sure that there probably are similar products out there. This is the first of this type that I have actually seen. And I find it really intriguing. And I've actually enjoyed using it so far. And, uh, and I've used it kind of in place of my iPad for the last month. And frankly, it reminds me a whole lot like using the T30. It does most things pretty well. And the things that are irritants to me, I've already mentioned at this point. So if this sounds intriguing to you and you're looking for a tablet that you don't mind tossing around, well, the Duji R10 is a very interesting option. If you look in the description down below, you can find some buying links there along with the typical linkage to do all of the stuff. Please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Have a great day and let the light in.